My name is Graham Young. I'm originally from England, Cheshire. I've been in Qatar, well I first went to Bahrain in 1977 and then spent three months in Qatar in 1979 and then I come back to Qatar in January 1980 for one year and I've been here since. Well, I originally went to Bahrain and then the, the company that I was with Bahrain got some jobs in Qatar. So I come originally for a, a Bahraini company and then the, Abdullah Guerreri bought the company from the Bahraini people. I started as a site supervisor and then the general manager left and I, I took over as the projects manager then. The company do, is specialist in sports surfacing, so most of our jobs are related to sports surfacing. I do everything from estimating, selling the product, and then ensuring that it's done to a reasonable, good standard. Oh no, we've done major jobs. I mean, we did the fencing all around Ras Lafan Industrial City when it first started. It was a major contract. Leveled the ground, filled in the subca. Then we did another fencing project that was 500 kilometres. Fenced both sides of the roads right from Zabara to Masai. Animal fencing, one jogging track that was 175 thousand square meter from the North Road to the Dukan Road, both sides, the processional road, Khalifa tennis. So far we've done all the surfacing on the tennis courts there. Right from when it first opened there was a one particular brand, same as Australian Open. So they changed their brand. So we had to change all the surfacing on all the courts at Khalifa tennis again. So we do hundreds of jobs every year. We did the grass on both sides of the sail circuit, more than 200,000 square meters in one order. Put artificial turf along the side of the roads, outside a spire zone, and Cata Foundation. And when it was first done, it looked so much like natural grass, nobody even suspected that it was artificial grass. It just looked so natural. And then dozens and dozens of football fields that are FIFA standard. different in the UK. Um, here it's all condensed. You know the whole country, everybody knows of you and your company, where if you want to UK 
every, every area would be is different. So cats are so condensed, it's so pleasant working here. There's you know, lots of opportunities here because it's developing. You can't believe how it's changed in the 40 years that I've, since I've been here. West Bay, there was only the Sheraton, nothing else. Just as, and it wasn't even finished, completed. It wasn't open then. Uh, now you look at West Bay, it's a completely developed area with all the skyscrapers. Now it's completely changed. When I first came to Qatar, the, like it was just just being just starting being developed, but nobody could imagine how fast fast and it would expand. Nobody. They have a vision for the 2030, which is even expanding more than it is now. So, it's the, you know, the, the outlook is still it's still good, it's still good. Even after the 2022 football, there's still going to be some development and a lot of maintenance. The contracts here run quite smoothly. Um, when, when you sign the contract, they expect you to start immediately, which can be sometimes difficult if you've got other, other work going on. But uh, and nowadays there's quite a few design and build contracts which means that when you estimate them, you're really guesstimating them because they're not designed. But it's usually sorted out with the government. They, they're usually quite accommodating. You're too busy working. Too busy working, yeah. If you work for a small company, you do everything from I do everything from estimating, negotiating the contracts, and then purchasing the materials. So you don't have time to deviate into learning learning new things, even. I've been in Qatar a long time, but I, I felt I didn't need to speak Arabic because all the engineers and things, people that we deal with, all speak good English. Our labourers, the Sri Lankans, they speak good English. So you can manage on English here quite well, yeah, and communicate with everybody. It's like a family company. They're, they're, the owner of the company come, works every day, comes to the office every day, and he, he treats us like his family. We're just like his sons to him. So it's, it's just a family company. So it's a pleasant working environment. You've got warm, sunny weather here all the year round. So I've always had a boat while I've been here. I used to go jet skiing every weekend. Uh, now, then I stopped doing that, I was getting a bit older. Uh, now, uh, now I've got a small boat and a jet ski, so I go out most, most weekends. Sun shines every day. That's why I like one of the reasons I like Qatar. The sun shines every day. I don't like the cold. I don't like the wet too much. So that's that's why I like Qatar so much.
the winter time we don't go out in the boat like we go out in the summer we, we go out every weekend but in the winter we usually go in the car where we can keep the coats because it's a bit cooler in Kata. In the summer we take the boat to Safleer Island it's very near here uh, and it's it's got shades the government have put shades it's very nice. If you ever have a problem on the boat in Kata Someone will always help you, either a catery will come and help you or they'll arrange the coast guard, the coast guard will come and pull you in, it's completely safe here, we've never had any, felt any danger, we've broken down two or three times and we've always got a tow back here with a, a catery or a coast guard and they pull you straight back in, no problem at all. When we first came to Cata, the West, there was no buildings on West Bay, only the Sheraton, nothing else at all. And the fact we used to launch the boat by the Sheraton, there used to be a nice launch area. Catter has developed unbelievably over the last 20 years, unbelievable. Was, like I say, there was nothing here, but the government has encouraged the skyscrapers to be built on the West Bay. They've made everything beautiful, new roads. I like the hot weather, I don't like the cold at all, that's why I left UK, so I could be in a warmer climate and I just love it here in Catron. I don't mind the summer, some people complain about the heat, I don't complain about the heat because you can always get in the air conditioned room or if you're on the sea it's cooler and it's a flare island, they've got these beautiful shades that are free to use for anybody, yeah, the government have really done a lot. I've been in Qatar since, I actually was here in 1979 for three months and then I came back in 19, January 1980 and I've lived here ever, for one year but I've lived here ever since then. So I've been here nearly 40 years. The sun shines every day. In 1977, when I originally went, came to the Middle East, I'd not heard of either Bahrain or Qatar. So we had to look it up on a map and then we found out about it, that the climate was hot. But we couldn't imagine how hot it was, because 1976 was the hottest year that UK has ever had. So after that we thought, ah, but no. Bahrain and Qatar are much hotter, especially Qatar than UK will ever be. I was my first wife. Originally went to Bahrain with me and then she didn't like Bahrain. And then they said, we could, so we left. And then we, in January 1980, they said, come back, but go to Qatar. So she said, okay, for one year. Uh, like I say, that was 40 years ago. And then she stayed, Yes, our son was born in Qatar. He's now 33 years old. My son was conceived here, but the, it was the, actually my wife went back to UK for the delivery, and then they came back, and then he, he was here in kindergarten, 
but for primary school they went back to UK. My son loves Qatar and he, he, used to, he used to visit me twice a year and he used to travel by himself sometimes. He used to have the badge that, from the airline with the passport in it that he, used, yeah, that he used to come. And then of course when he's older he came by himself or with his mother. He likes the things we do. We had a, a dirt motorbike, uh, we have the boat, always had a boat so we used to go on the sea. He loves young boys, love go to the sand dunes, going out on the sea, going to the desert. So many things that you can do here that of course you cannot do in the UK. After we got divorced, um, I was on my own and then somebody introduced, introduced me to my wife in Qatar because she was working in Qatar where her husband was in the Philippines and then he died and then we seemed to get on and then we started dating and we eventually got married 14 years ago now. When I first came to Qatar, we had a, a house in Al Sad. It was behind what was then called Salam Studios. After I lived there for four years, then we moved to West Bay. It was actually a Gulf helicopters combat compound. So we lived on there for five years, and then I moved to this area. From the third villa I lived in, we moved just a few hundred metres up the road into another villa, in, again in New Al Salata. If we go back to when I lived in behind Salam, when Salam built in El Sad, everybody said to them, why are you building in El Sad? This is miles from anywhere, nobody, where is El Sad? There's only tracks to get there. Now, Al Sad is, you know, like a town centre in itself. My name is Nancy Young. I am from the Philippines, and uh, I've been. 21 years in Qatar this coming April. I haven't heard about Qatar when I came here. And uh, applied, I applied for an overseas job in Manila. And uh, since I was the only breadwinner of the family, and I could say that this is a blessing for me, not for only for me, but for my family, uh, to land a job here in Doha. I was on the plane and then I saw Qatar I said, it's all desert and, uh, and then when I landed it was very quiet. So, and then I said, this must be a good opportunity for me and this is a challenge for me. Here in Doha, it is very safe. I love uh, living here. It's clean, it's, it's very safe. Uh, sometimes I forgot to lock the door and uh, nothing happens to us. Now I have everything what I didn't have before. A happy life. I, had my, I met my husband here and we got married here. Unlike when if I didn't leave Philippines, I could have not had the chance to travel around the world. Whenever I travel to the Philippines, I always yield to go to come back into Doha. I miss the cleanliness, the peaceful surrounding, 
and uh, it's just like everything is so close, so near. If you ask me uh, what is Qatar to me, Qatar is a dream come true. That's one. And Qatar is an amazing country. Qatar changed my life and I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. If not, if I didn't come here, I won't be. I am now. The culture from UK and Qatar is very different. The Arab people are very generous, uh, helpful, where people in UK just tend to get on with their lives as it is. But the, if you break down here, a Qatari will always come and help you. If you're in the desert, they, on the sand dunes, they will come. If you get stuck. Yeah, we, we like the Qatari food. In fact, at a wedding, this friend, he brought a complete sheep on the bed of rice as his gift, well, his part of his gift for us, for the food, for the reception. Uh, I've been at Sheikh's farm where we've had roast camel. So, yeah, there's some special Qatari, Qatari food that you would know. You know, when you tell people in UK they serve a whole lamb complete with the head, nobody will believe you. You, you see it and you get the, you see them carrying the whole lamb with the rice and then they pull the meat off uh, and throw your pieces it's it just it's just different it's just uh, they live everybody helps each other even the food they'll pull a piece off and put it on your plate before they'll put the food on their plate it's uh, something that nobody would do in the UK There's an area that now is called Wakif uh, Souk, that used to be an open souk, much more, to me, much more friendly than it was now. And you could use walk around there and they've got all the Arabic dress, uh, trinkets, souvenirs. So you, you could just wander around there and you just collect it, try it, try it on in the, in the, in the alleyway. Is it, there was no, Hardly any shop, it was just an alleyway you used to try things on. Pick this, pick that. Then there was very little choice for television. There was only Channel 9 and Channel 37. Those days there was lots of programmes about the pearl diving, the people on the dows, and you used to show them diving and collect it. Because they didn't use di any diving equipment, they just used to use a stick on the nose then to hold the nose closed and how they did it I don't know. Qatar is really my life. I've spent most of my life in Qatar. Much more much more time than I've actually spent in the UK. So just as far as I'm concerned, Qatar is my home. Goodbye. 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 Have a great day. Thank you. Masala.